why should church media be a primary focus for outreach and engagement, especially, you know, nowadays? Yeah, Gary, I think it's a simple answer. It's numbers. It's the potential numbers of people that you can reach through media. You know, I think Mm -hmm. if Jesus were here on earth with us today, uh, he would be utilizing all of these options and opportunities to get the gospel message out. So I I think we're at such a wonderful time in existence. There's so many opportunities uh, to share the story of Jesus through podcasting, through TV, through radio, through social media. Uh, I think it's just that simple. And even those churches that are 100 people, they have this amazing opportunity uh, to impact way more people than they could just in the four walls of their worship center. So um, I think churches really need to consider particularly, particularly podcasting. It's ridiculous how fast audio podcasting is growing. Hey friends, it's Gary here back with the Buckscast Podcast. Today we are bringing in a very special, unique individual who does some really cool, unique things with media, especially podcasts. His name is Josh Brown. He has a company called His Productions. Josh, welcome to the Buckscast Podcast, buddy. How are you today? Gary, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, It's going to be fun. Yeah, man, absolutely. And I can already see that you like if you go to Josh's uh, the his productions website, you guys will see some of the setup that they have in their studio um, in their control area. It's some of the dopest looking setups I've ever seen. <laughs> so uh, it's very cool. Very cool looking, man. Fun spot to, to work in for sure. Absolutely. So, well, Josh, I'm grateful to have you on the podcast. The reason Boxcast reached out to you is because you are a church media expert. I've seen quite a few things of you, you know, of yours, the videos. I've seen a lot of your work, your handiwork, your team's handiwork in the back end with getting some production stuff up for churches or maybe just church organizations. But for those people who are not familiar with who and what you are and what you do, why don't you give us a little bit about yourself? And about uh, a little bit about his productions, kind of give us the in, insiders behind the scenes look, you know, the Marvel behind the scenes look here. <laughs> sure. Sure. Well, uh, as Gary said, I'm Josh Brown. Um, I'm, uh, I don't know what you'd call me at his productions uh, owner, I guess. Uh, we've been serving the body of Christ for over 24 years. I've been doing the same thing. Mm. Um, and we specialize, we'd like to say we're deacons of media. We tend the tables of media to free pastors and staff members up to tell the story of Jesus. Um, You know, there's a lot of mechanical things that go into printing good video, printing good audio, recording well, lighting well, all those kinds of things. And then not to mention production. And so our company kind of focuses on taking that burden uh, off of ministries. Uh, So we do post-production. We we do post-production for TV, uh, for radio and for podcasts. And uh, we're based in the Midwest, but our our staff, like a lot of businesses these days, are all over the country. Our producers are in Oregon and Colorado. Our video producers in Detroit. Uh, you know, there's there's wow. people all over the world <laughs> yeah. uh, that are working with us. Oh, my goodness, man. So, <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, Boxcast is being, you know, centralized to Cleveland, you know, Cleveland made mm-hmm. straight out of Cleveland is what we like to say sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, we kind of have the same functionality where there's a lot of a lot of our engineers or a lot of our folks are not in the Cleveland area. Myself, I'm not in the Cleveland area usually. Mm-hmm. So I come up to Cleveland, but that's awesome. So how did how did his productions become a thing? Like what got you into doing yeah. this? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a much longer story, but, um, you know, I was raised in the church, but I didn't get saved until I was 19. And I lived a pretty rough life uh, throughout high school. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, when I when I was saved, I man, I, I got kicked out of school with with uh, with two months left to graduate and had no appreciable skills of any kind, like uh, no. no use, no usefulness in the world. And so I knew God had called me to ministry. And so I started working at a church and they had a couple of full power radio stations I'm making like 200 bucks a week. I'm newly married and I've got a, a my firstborn son on the way. And I just began to recognize like, God, I, I got to figure something out to provide for my family beyond what the ministry was providing at that time. And I was learning how to produce radio, how to, how to be a, a host, a DJ, that kind of thing. And God just put this idea in my mind. What if I were to do what I was doing for my lead pastor at that time, which was producing his Bible teaching 
you know, taking a, a 45 minute uh, Bible teaching and cutting that into two radio segments. What if I did that for other pastors? You know, this was late mm -hmm. 99, early 2000. I was at a men's conference in Blue Island, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Um, I was a, you know, 20 year old kid sitting at a lunch table and just kind of sharing with this guy that was sitting with me, you know, this is what I feel like God's telling me to do. And I didn't know at that time because there, there was a keynote speaker, but he was the pastor of that particular church that was hosting the, the conference. And he said, Josh, I want to hire your company to do that for me. And so his productions was born right at that lunch table. And uh, over the years, we've continued to grow. Uh, now we serve 125 ministries globally. There's 40 of us here at his productions. Um, I couldn't have dreamed that God would do what he's done um, with, with, this, with this particular ministry and business. Dude, it's awesome to hear how the company got started and then how you're moving and forwarding and everything's going in that direction. So I'm glad and everything, everything seems to be doing well. You, you are, you know, you're doing a really great service. If you haven't seen anything Josh's company is doing, we'll, we'll put a couple of links that he has off of his website in our description below to give you an idea of what the church, you know, what the, the church's handles are with, uh, you know, his productions is doing for churches and what they're, they're kind of production media looks like and how it sounds and give you an idea of how they're actually producing things. But Josh, the real reason I brought you on is because you being a church media expert, uh, I have some pretty good questions for you today in regards to that alone. So if you're ready okay. to jump in with me, let's do it both feet first. Let's go. Cool, man. I'll do my best. Hey, well, we know, we know here at BoxCast that churches are struggling to shift with the culture. Right. Um, and whether that be the, the culture of media consumption or maybe it's just the culture of, you know, fast food. <laughs> right. The fast food mentality that a lot of places have. A lot of people have nowadays, like give it to me now. I want it quick and fast and I want it simple. Yeah. Um, but with that shifting of the way that works, that happens in media all the time with churches and it happens within our culture a lot. But churches seem to face like a really up like a large uphill battle here. So my question for you, first question right out the gate, and I'm going to go hard here is why should church media be a primary focus for outreach and engagement, especially, you know, nowadays? Yeah, Gary, I think it's a simple answer. It's numbers. It's the potential numbers of people that you can reach through media. You know, I think mm -hmm. if Jesus were here on earth with us today, uh, he would be utilizing all of these options and opportunities to get the gospel message out. So I, I think we're at such a wonderful time in existence. There's so many opportunities uh, to share the story of Jesus through podcasting, through TV, through radio, through social media. Uh, I think it's just that simple. Even small churches, you know, we serve churches, Gary, that are, you know, from 100 people up to 15,000 people. Wow. And even those churches that are a hundred people, they have this amazing opportunity uh, to impact way more people than they mm -hmm. could just in the four walls of their worship center. So um, I think churches really need to consider particularly, particularly podcasting. So uh, it's not just hockey stick growth in, in audio podcasting. It's, it's ridiculous how fast audio podcasting is growing. So when I talk with churches, I, I, it's not a sales tactic. I literally will tell them, it really doesn't matter if you work with a company like His Productions. I would like that, of course. Of course. But of course, you know, but it's 2024. It's not if you have a podcast, you have to have a podcast. It's not right. an option anymore. And there's some really simple things that can be done to kind of get your get your toe in the water in the media world that are pain free, that are doubling down on your existing content. Um, but it's not an if you have to do it. I think you should partner with a company that helps present your message and your vision of the gospel uh, in a beautiful and a professional way. But regardless, you church people who are watching this podcast, please don't wait start your podcast today. If you don't have a podcast, you must do this. Uh, it, it's just, it's crucial. Podcasting is just a part of part of life. Right. But you, I, you have that shirt, don't you? I know you've got that shirt. It I says podcasting it. is life. Man, I, I got a big conference coming up. I'm going to be at the SBC, the Southern Baptist convention in yeah. Indianapolis in June. Maybe June, I'm going to make right. some shirts like that and just start wearing them around. 
Yeah, just put the His Productions logo on the back of the top of there and then just put Podcasting is Life. That's a, yeah. That would be – I would buy one. I'm all in, man. I'm I love in. podcasts. I listen to ridiculous amount of podcast content. And you you gave her an interesting t- statistic. So if you're not familiar with uh, Josh's website, we'll, we'll put a link in below. But on his website, he actually has a really great video to show you how to get started, like the six simple steps that you need to do to use to get started in a podcasting format. And I think the biggest thing that you did really well in that video, Josh, was that you introduced some statistics. And one of the statistics was that out of all of the Americans <laughs> in our country, that 11 million Christians listen to a podcast every single day, 11 million, seven days a week. Right. Yeah. And, and, but my question that I rolled in my head was, okay, that's 11 million people that you know guaranteed would be listening to a podcast of some form and fashion. But what about the other 300 and X million, you know, that are not engaged in that? That is huge opportunity. I mean, huge opportunity. There's nowhere else that you would be able to get outside of social media to extend your reach, like to extend your outreach and engagement possibilities. Right. With, you know, and, and I, I do believe I also agree podcasting is one of the best forms to do that. So that led me into the next question is like, do you think churches currently are underutilizing podcasting and media to to use as a tool for outreach and engagement? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, Gary. I mean, I'm shocked personally, just because the pain point is so it's so small. It's so little right to get involved in the podcast world. It's easy to do this. Um, and I still encounter people that don't have podcasts that are not, um, that are not utilizing this as a, as a method of outreach or, or even as a method of discipling those that are in their church. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of reasons why, and there, there's a ton of ways, and we could go that direction if you want, Gary, I'll, I'll, I trust your judgment, but, um, <laughs> I definitely think that, that, that churches and ministries as a whole, are are they're not utilizing it to the fullest potential right i don't disagree with you i think it's the same concept that we have because boxcast is being a video platform for churches like that's Mm -hmm. our main drive is like we want churches to utilize their content that they're doing every single week or even more so every single day to further their outreach and engagement to further their message you know what what i call the message shout like shooting that message out to everywhere you possibly can and by the time that we release this podcast boxcast will have released our sharing feature which is going to give you the ability to take your video content break it down into a different, you know, multiple formats. And then you'll be able to take that wow. share that clip and then post that clip. You'll be able to share that clip to social media. Yeah. Um, and so we believe wholly that uh, Josh believes in audio being the primary factor. We believe in mm-hmm. video being a primary factor yeah. and they kind of marry together. They work together, but yeah, I yeah. agree. You know, podcasting being one of the, the, the most, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's the fastest form of media consumption, right? It currently it's like, it's the fastest growing media consumption since it, it absolutely is. 2019. It absolutely I think it was. Is. Yeah. Yeah. There's it, it's growing just exponentially. Um, and the difference between audio and video is just the complexity of what it takes to film and to record. Right. We encourage our customers to start with audio, but absolutely, Gary, if you can get get a podcast going to video as well, do it. Of course you should. You know, that's that's uh, without a doubt, I would say the apex of, of content is getting it out where people can see. Uh, I'm a big, I don't know if you've ever, have you ever heard of the Nero theologian, Jim Wilder? Do you yes, know? I have. Yes. Okay. You know the other half of church? Um, some the of it, yes, yes. Rare yes. leadership. I, I've I've read I've read the back cover once. <laughs> okay, Gary, I'm telling you, and and the producer in the background, guys, the other half of church is is one of those memorial stone kind of books. This is right. one of those those things that God will use to completely transform you as a person. And and one of the biggest things that it talks about in that book is the, the necessity of being able to see, see people's eyes. There's something that mm. happens. There's, there's this, uh, joy. They define joy this way. Joy is, is knowing that the person you're with wants to be with you. That's joy. And so you can't get that with audio, obviously, because you can't see the person's face, but there's a difference when even over a camera like this, when you're, you're seeing someone who genuinely is present in that moment and speaking to you about whatever God's doing in their life or what God could do in their lives, there's something different about that. And so I would absolutely say, get to video as soon as you can. 
but mm-hmm. we do encourage people to start with audio because it's 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 kind of the shallow end of the pool. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, it's easier to step down into something that's a, that's a smaller level than it is to jump into something that has a deeper end, right? It's it's yeah. so much more simpler. Video is definitely more complex, and I don't disagree with you on that. It's very, very more complex. Boxcast, we do we do our very best to make that an easier jump, like, you know, where, where you actually got floaties on. <laughs> when yeah, you're yeah. In. But, but yeah, but you, you, you made mention of it being a, such a small pain point to enter into the audio space and then podcast starting. Yeah. So Josh, give me, give me some reasons about, you know, those pain points, like what, what pain points you said so small, give me some of those small things that, you know, are easier to step into audio and podcasting. Like you've already made mention, Hey, you should start here, which was, you know, you're jumping ahead of my questions list, which I didn't give to you ahead of time, but Sorry. like, <laughs> no, you're good, man. It's all good. I love it. So like what you see some of those small pain points. So what are those pain points that yeah. make it, make it difficult for churches or make it easier for churches? Gary, I think it's conception or, or perceptions. I should say, you know, a church has a perception that the only way to do a podcast, this is, I, I shoot a podcast uh, once a week in my studio here with my one of my pastors, and they think, oh, I'm going to have to have this microphone in place, and I'm mm. going to have to you know, dedicate 10 hours a week to doing this podcast. The shallowest end of the pool of the podcast world is simple, right? Come up with a name, get all the, all the branding that you need around that name, work with a company like Boxcast or another hosting, co- something like that. And then literally take the Bible teaching that you've already invested all your time in. Pre- right. Teachers, preachers, you have studied the word of God. Some of you 15 and 20 hours per week, getting into history, getting into language, getting into story. You've already invested in teaching this sermon to your congregation. Just double dip. Take that right. sermon and put it out there. Now you've done nothing extra. All you've done is clicked a few buttons. Again, work with a group like Pod, uh, Boxcast to get it out there. And it's done. Like that is a very small pain point. I think some people have the misunderstanding that starting a podcast is going to be, you know, I'm going to have to have this massive control room and multiple cameras and microphones. No, it, it's as simple as double dipping with the teaching that you're already putting out. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't and I agree with you wholeheartedly. Now, the crazy thing is like misconceptions also play a huge factor in the in the perceptions that are there as well. And yeah. the misconceptions are that you do need a lot of equipment or that you do need yeah. a lot of expertise. And with today's like, I mean, maybe, maybe I would say maybe 10 years ago, you would need, uh, I would say 50% more knowledge than what you would need today. Agreed. To do- to do that right like 10 years ago that was the whole scape of like why a lot of these companies started popping up everywhere is because they were like well we're gonna make it easy to do this but the cool thing is is that misconception is the is probably diminished really really to almost zero now with the with the concepts of how things are being done and how many tools we have available to make those things happen and with a company like his productions, you guys actually take it a step further. Talk to me mm-hmm. about your production stuff. Like you, yeah. you make that a little bit more manageable. You said earlier in our intro here this morning that it was about taking the, the time and giving it back to those pastors or those media producers or those tech directors who are having to do that. Talk about the production side of being a, a misconception. Yeah. To getting started. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's it's a misconception, but it's also just a poor use of time. So I, mm-hmm. I, we see a lot of creative arts teams who are doing the hard work of storyboarding, which we think is the top level of what creative arts departments should be engaging in. Pastors should be engaging in storyboarding. So creating podcast, video podcast and audio content that tells the story of Jesus through their lens, through their, their community. But then... They waste their time by being involved in production, like the actual kerchunking, like the editing. Like mm-hmm. I'm taking out the <laughs> clicks and pops and <laughs> right. mouth noises and the, 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 the stutters and the misspeaking. And they spend a bulk of their time in a in a cave studio cutting video, cutting audio, when they really should be back in the creative room whiteboarding with the rest of the team about the next story about Jesus. So his productions, we take raw content. So all you do is is think and create a beautiful story, record it on video, record it on audio, send it to us, (laughs) and then we take care of the rest from from soup to nuts. So we're we're doing all the cutting, all the color grading, all the audio mastering, editing, copywriting, voiceover, and then rendering, bouncing. We can even handle distribution on platforms like Boxcast. So people will add our company 
to a platform like Boxcast as an administrator, essentially. So we'll log right. in on their behalf and we will do the distribution as well. So it could be as simple for churches as just, just printing. That's it. Think of this story, a, a beautiful story about Jesus, print that in whatever media format you need and then send it to his productions. We'll take care of everything else. Right. Yeah. Which is an, uh, it, which honestly, if you think about it in the scope of time being a resource, because I think, and maybe you, you, I mean, you, I, you've served in ministry, so, you know, I've served in ministry, so I know I'm a worship way. arts pastor right now. Right. And I'm, and I'm a young adults and media pastor. So I know fully as well as how that works as well. So like the, the biggest thing is like, we don't consider a lot of us don't consider in the ministry world time being a resource. Time is not something that we see as, um, uh, as like a, a monetary piece to the puzzle. Right. Because it really is. And it that's is. even any entrepreneur can tell you the same thing. Like, are you being paid for the time that you're putting into your business? And most yeah. of them say no, right? Like, no, I'm not paying myself anything yet. Cause it's not to that level. And so ministers don't see time as mm -hmm. being a primary contributor of a resource. So with that, you guys are giving back something. You're actually saving them money <laughs> per se by yeah. doing that production piece. So Josh, you taught, you said a couple of times now that the, the echelon of production is not something that you are doing for the church, but they're doing the storyboarding or they're doing, that's like the top end, right? Talk yeah. to me about that for a second. We, we don't, churches don't seem to understand conceptual ideas of how production works, nor do they understand how ideas are generated and then mm -hmm. uh, come down the line to being a finished product. When you say storyboarding, walk me through that a little bit with churches. Like what is something that churches should start considering to do and they're like getting up to that upper echelon of, Hey, you have a content production team who's handling this, or maybe yeah. you have two people who are coming down with that. Like, give me, give me a little bit about that. Like, what are you seeing as trends? What are something you would help churches get started doing that? Yeah. I, I think that is a place where churches are probably grossly understaffed is mm -hmm. the creative arts departments, um, tech directors, uh, creative arts directors, those kinds of things. I think it needs to begin with the sort of the flavor or vibe uh, or DNA of your own community. I'll give you an example. We work for a church in Vancouver, Washington called Crossroads Community Church. The pastor there is named uh, Daniel Fusco. Just a just a great, great pastor, great content. Listeners, viewers, check it out. Um, his his TV show is called Real with Daniel Fusco. His, his radio broadcast podcast is called Jesus is Real Radio and Podcast. Um, but they have a lot of refugees in their city. Like they have a lot of people coming into Vancouver, the refugees. And they found that there was a lot of these people that were coming into the city who didn't have shoes. Mm. It sounds like so basic, like, okay, can't Salvation Army or Goodwill or whatever. Like, isn't there somebody solving this problem? So they're looking at what's happening in their own community and their own uh, area of, of ministry. And they started with this story or uh, an idea to minister to these folks that are coming into their city. And then they began to film the, the idea and the concept, pitching it to the church. Hey, bring your shoes in. And it, and it um, culminated with this beautiful image of this mountain. And I mean a mountain of shoes that they just piled in their, in their lobby or, or, or family room, whatever you would call it. Um, so I think from, from the needs within the community, uh, right down to telling the story of how the church becomes the solution or or the hands and feet of Jesus for that need within the community. Just film it. Just record it. Talk about it. Talk about how God led you through this to, to be that solution. Send all that footage. Send all that audio to a company like His Productions. We'll produce it. We'll push it out on a platform like Boxcast. Yeah. Now, do you guys happen, do you guys do a lot? So, I, I'm going to back up. So when they, when a church goes into storyboarding or creating the, you know, the idea or concept, mm -hmm. and then they begin to film that, is there any like one specific thing that you tell a church that they should do to make maximize the use of, of that, their time that they're using in filming? Like, cause a lot, you see a lot of videos now. I mean, video again, being the big thing mm -hmm. or even audio, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of production that goes behind it, but there's also yeah. like multiple camera angles or multiple perspectives, or yeah. there's certain ways that things are shot or certain things that ways things are recorded to mm -hmm. give a little bit more flavor in that production. What is something yeah. you would tell a church who's like, I have no idea how to start doing that. 
Like, yeah, it's right. fine and dandy to give me an Osmo Pocket 3 and let me go out and record a bunch of stuff, yep. you know, and get the audio with it or to to go out and just start recording my thoughts on a, you know, in the kind of like on my daily bread situation with the audio recordings. Right. But like what what would you tell a church that, hey, you know, we're, we're telling you to start doing content recording. Where would you tell them to start? Yeah, I think you need you need an owner. Like you need someone within the church to own that department and to to spearhead that initiative. Mm -hmm. And so start start looking and, and looking for that person within your church or even on your staff. You know, maybe maybe they're on the bus, but they're not on the right seat on the bus and they need to move to a different department. From there, you begin asking those questions. You know, start right. polling and asking the people in your church. Hey, have you, is there an addictions story in your background that, that you would be willing to share with others or a, a marriage story where there was brokenness in a marriage and God restored it? and just start collecting it, just start printing it, start filming it, start collecting the stories of the people that you're worshiping with, uh, that are part of your, your, your faith community. And then from, from there, it really is just getting it out there, just getting it out there. You kind of mentioned two different things there, Gary. You, you talked about equipment as well, multiple camera angles. That's a that's a, a parallel, I think, track to be thinking about. And it is very important, I, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that's kind of a separate conversation to the content itself, like how right. you film, like lighting cameras, uh, those kinds of things. Very, very important. Right. Well, the reason I mentioned it that way is because that's a men like, I mean, you would agree with me, right? Like that's the mentality misconception of a church is like, yeah. Oh, wow. We're going to need 15 grand to do all of this because we want it to be high quality out the gate. Like it's got to be the best it can be like that 4k camera has got to be the thing we buy because that's what everybody's doing. But what you're telling them is the exact opposite. It's like, you don't yeah. need a 4k camera. Start with, start with a handy, start with your iPhone. Right. Or even, yeah. even in this case, use your iPhone's audio and maybe get that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, Josh. I bought probably the best mobile recording microphone I have ever bought. Okay. In my life. Okay. Pro like tip. the DJ, you've seen the DJI or the roadcasters that, you know, they're, they're actual clipper magnetic clips. We know, use so roadcaster pros. Yeah. Roadcaster pros are dope. I, I, I like the DJI ones as well. Um, even like, uh, Holly, uh, Hollyland, Hollyland makes a really yeah. nice set of them. Right. So I bought these things off of Timu. I'm not kidding you, man. I paid 12 bucks for these things. They are fantastic. They clip. They're 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 completely Bluetooth to the device. I love it. Absolutely phenomenal. But anyway, that's yeah. what you're telling somebody. You're telling them, yeah. hey, don't worry about the fifteen thousand dollar camera setup or yeah. you know the five hundred dollar microphone requirements that are coming in here. Just just do it. Just get started by using what you have already currently. Um, and I think that's the story behind every content creator on the face of the planet is that if you look back in their, their goal, you know, the early days, their videos suck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, their audio yeah. is garbage. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, not, not to call back to some older pastors, but if you looked at, um, uh, and obviously they're in media right now and there's some controversy, but if you look back to like the ape, like the actual beginning, the dawning, the Genesis of, uh, podcasting or even church media, like with Mars Hill, for example, like yeah. their stuff was awful at the beginning, <laughs> you know, Elevation Church's stuff was terrible at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and now look at where they're at, you know, with the roaming cameras. But anyway, so I, I digress to go back to that. But mm -hmm. you're telling them start. Just just do it. Just take your eyes. The story is what's important. Through. Right. The story is what's important. The story right. is what should your energy and all of your attention should focus on the story. It doesn't mean that your cameras and audio aren't important. They are. But honestly, you know, you said it, we've got 4K cameras in our pockets. There's yep. inexpensive microphones. I will say one thing that is important. People will abide watching um, a, a video with decent audio that's not shot really well. That's like kind of jittery on an iPhone. They'll, they'll abide. They'll watch that. Yes. But they're not going to watch a video with crappy audio. Oh, so thank you. Thank you. Audio really is in terms of YouTube or and or video ministry. Audio is is right up there in oh, its, in its importance. It's king. No, no, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. So we've done a lot of surveys with Boxcast yeah. um, to a lot of content creators, a lot of um, a lot of our pardon me, a lot of our users. And we've asked them, hey, would you watch a video with no audio? And the answer to that question is always no. 
Yeah. Right. You know, even if you had the captions, which is I, which is surprising with the short form content that you see nowadays, with you know, with yeah. like reels and and of course with TikToks and all that jazz, like nobody's listening to audio on those. They're all reading it, right? right. Because of the fact, but it's uh, it's an interesting thing. Audio to and I agree, audio is king because without good audio, it's really hard to watch just mediocre yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, there's it's never been easy. It's never been more easy to print great audio like you can yeah. do it. I mean, uh, I didn't know about the the gadgets on Timu that you're talking about, but we use Rodecaster Pros. We have we have very, very expensive microphones that we'll use on set. Sure, definitely. Uh, but there are some really affordable options out there. I think the Rodecaster Pro, the DJI stuff is is fantastic. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just yeah. bought a $12 thing off of like, I was going to Israel. I was supposed to go to Israel in January this year, oh. and I bought it to to record my father in law, uh, who is our senior minister, our senior pastor, yeah. and because he's very knowledgeable. So I bought him for that reason because it was yeah. super easy, cheap, and fast and USB charge. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. Okay. So yeah. now let's switch those gears a little bit. We've kind of like gone into third and fourth gear. I want to hit the fifth gear and start okay. taking this Ferrari to the max. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our Tesla or whatever car you want to put our, our 2000 or our 1992 Nissan Sentra. That's where we're at. Get it. So it, within this aspect, we talk about media production and we talk about, you know, just starting, we talk about all these things, but some of the things that we're not talking about is what's ahead. So Josh, in your line of business with your production company and the work that you're doing, mm -hmm. you guys are obviously using a lot of tools, um, you're using a lot of production assets. Um, you're losing a lot of, you know, software or maybe it's even full blown hardware. But what are you seeing as a trend? And then what are you seeing as some of the things that are coming up that you've got your eye on for the future? Particularly, you know, we could go into the AI world, but, you know, where do you see yeah. those things playing a role now? Yeah. You know, I, I think, I think, uh, this is, a, uh, maybe more of a cultural, um, commentary, but I, I think that AI is, is kind of e uh, akin to the Walmart, um, economy mindset. So there was a time oh. in the world where, where, where the big box store, the bottom dollar, the least amount of money that I could spend, the cheapest thing that I could buy was winning every day. And, and mm -hmm. you saw the proliferation of some of these big, big box places. But I do see a shift towards uh, quality, towards more boutique options. Um, I think AI is, is, is a Walmart thing right now. And I think Ooh. that it's going to, it's going to be, it's, it's wild west right now. And there's a lot of options out there, but you're going to see a full circle back to boutique options. So for instance, one of the things that I literally advertise is my voiceover team. There's a couple things about my voiceover team. There's 25, 30 people. One, they're all people of faith. Two, they're all people. I think <laughs> non, like non AI. <laughs> I love non, the way you said that, man. You know I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I love non, the way you said it. <laughs> I think non AI voiceover is going to be that boutique shop that's on the corner that's make hand making that bag, right, or that pair of jeans or whatever it is. Right. Versus like, oh, I got twenty this or that for two pennies, you know, at, at Walmart. So I, I'm not threatened by AI in the slightest. I can hear the difference. Um, there's, I think there's, I think people's, can I say this on your, you could cut this if you want. <laughs> I think people's BS meters are really tuned, man. Oh, I wow. Think, yeah. I think people know, like they feel there's heart and spirit and soul behind certain things. Like they know the difference. I could play an AI track of a VO and then I can play one of my guys voiceover stuff and you're there's, it will strike a chord inside you because they're coming with faith. They're coming with belief. So AI to me is, is not necessarily something that there we use it, right? but we use it as a secondary tool. The mm -hmm. initial creative sort of em embryo sort of part of what we do is always with a, a believing human. And then I'm going to throw AI on top of that to kind of polish and sand and, and make that a little bit better uh, than it was. But I never personally, I don't, we, our company does not use AI as an inception point. It's not a, a idea or creative point. It, it comes as a secondary step. 
I don't know yeah. if that if I'm making sense by saying it that way. No, it makes complete sense. I mean, you're using it. You're using it. Actually, you're using it either in secondary or tertiary. Tertiary. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're definitely. I mean, you're you're not doing it as a primary method. You know, um, I know that I've used AI many times for like helping me come up with better ways to say something or. But you had the idea first. Right. Exactly. But, you know, or helping me with, uh, hey, I've got this somewhat similar concept of an idea. Help me generate more off of it by giving me things I haven't thought of. Right. Yeah. So and that makes complete sense in the terms. And I think the church is becoming wise to that. And you're right. Authenticity is something that we can't hear. And it's something that that I think a lot of people are, you know, their meters are definitely being more attuned to that in regards. And I don't think we're going to cut that, Wade, at all. Uh, (laughs) uh, I don't think that's a necessary cut, but it's it's one of those things like, um, yeah, I mean, the the attenuation is getting to be uh, a little bit like everybody has had their fill of sugar. And now they now they really want the meat and potato. And usually that's has to be authentic and it's got to be original. And I think we all fight with that originality. Um, that's why we we get so fed up, like with seeing the same things being done over and over and over again, right? The same mm-hmm. movies being made or the same books being written or the same content being generated is like, you know, when they, and I'll give you a, just a piece for me, but in my world of my, my second, you know, life of being a, an entrepreneur and owning a, a small business um, niche and, and finding your niche, finding your originality is key. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's the, you know, that's how you serve, the community and that's how you become known is by doing something with original concepts and original value. So yeah, no, that makes complete sense. So Josh, tell me a little bit about the production tools you guys use currently though. Like, yeah. um, are you using things like light stock for any kind of like stock media generation or, sure. you know, yep. how are you using Adobe, you know, <laughs> premiere for, for your guys' sound crafting? Like what, what, what are, what all tools do you guys use at his productions? Yep. So we have been on Adobe Audition on the audio side of the world since Cool Edit Pro 1.0. Oh my it, goodness, bro. <laughs> Centrillion when it was owned by, right? Yeah. Oh, you're like one, way back there. I'm talking early 2000s. I started yeah. on, a, on an a, a, like an audio science two in, two out, like PCI card in a, in a, in a uh, computer l- dumping cassette tapes into oh, the very goodness. first DAW on Cool Edit Pro. I'd master those in, a, in Cool Edit Pro, and then I'd dump them back out to a tape deck. Like, that's cool. that's my, my that's how old I am. Cool uh, so we Edit use, Pro, dude. Oh, yeah, my bro. goodness. That blue logo is coming back to me and everything, <laughs> dude. Like, <laughs> But it was powerful. Like, oh, yeah, I was. mean, we've got, we've got professionals that are using Pro Tools and Logic, Cubase. These are great tools. Ableton, great tools for music and producing records and composition and all those kinds of things. Right. For long form audio, mono, oral, mono, mono editing, Adobe Audition can't be beat. The, the no. way that it's laid out, the way that the hotkeys work, it is so laser beam fast. It's really, really good. Um, we use a particular plugin from waves that I okay. think just kicks the crap out of isotope. The isotope okay. RX suite is beautiful. It's a very powerful suite. Um, it's super expensive, but we found this plugin from waves called clarity RX. Yes. So, I'm familiar with clarity. Dude, yeah. It's dark magic. I don't even know how they do it, <laughs> but like $30, it's a $30 plugin. Oh, it's cheap. Yeah. That it's bad cheap. Larry works really well. So yeah. So every piece of audio we print, even stuff that I record here as a voiceover person, I still give it a pass with Waves Clarity. Mm. Um, In my particular context, I use an Avalon preamp. It's a single channel hardware box preamp, 737 SP. Uh, I use a Neumann BCM 104 um, uh, as my voiceover microphone. For podcasts, we use Shure SM7Bs, or I'll use what I'm speaking on right now, which is a Sennheiser 416 shotgun mic. Okay. Um, Cameras are, 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 we're built on the Sony FX3 platform. So all of our cameras are FX3s. Um, I'm trying to think. We do, our video producer uses Adobe Premiere. Now, I will say, he uses DaVinci Resolve for uh, color grading. Color just grade. for just Dude, for grading. Their, their color grading engine's pretty dope. It's a little bit better than Premiere. When I when I mess around with video myself, I use Final Cut just because 
I'm not good at it. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a video producer. Uh, the guy that does our production, he came from Fox News in Nashville. He's a wizard. He's really, really good at it. He's been on Premiere for a long time. So that's the software that we use. Our entire company the operations side this is a whole other conversation we could have because I could geek out about this is on a, a custom build on ClickUp. If you're familiar with ClickUp, it's I've like never heard of ClickUp. ClickUp is like Basecamp or Asana or Monday.com or Trello, gotcha. but but on another level, like on, on steroids, level. the okay. automations that are baked in that you can do. There's APIs between make.com and ClickUp that you can do. Powerful, powerful automations. So our entire operations are, are in ClickUp um, software-based. Mm. We use Slack for all communications. We don't use email. We don't text. We really don't do a lot of, yeah, Facebook Messenger, none of that. Slack is kind of our central platform. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think of other software platforms. I, you know, I use Notion a little bit, but I find it. I, I find that the the GUI is a little bit. It's not very aesthetic. Not like ClickUp is. Mm -hmm. Notion's a yeah. little bit more hacky, and you know, you just got to be a code. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that was what it was designed for. So yeah. Yeah. ClickUp, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure though, like if you get into ClickUp, I'm pretty sure it's a white label Notion install. I think ClickUp actually is, you. they just built, you know, very powerful stuff on top of a Notion database. I, I'm pretty sure that's how, it's, how Probably. it works. Because well, they all... look very, very similar. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of anything else that we we might use cool software. I, I use Loom. I guess Loom is another big, big thing that we use. Loom's huge um, yeah. for, for communications, particularly hearkening back to the earlier conversation of the other half of church. So there are times when I need to talk to a team member who's in California or a client, and I want them to see my eyeballs. I want them to see my body language. I want them to hear the, the intonation in my voice. I want them to see my heart. An email right. just won't do. A text won't do. Uh, and so Loom is is a big part of of. I mean, I probably use Loom half a dozen times every day. Mm, yeah, we use Loom here as well uh, for a lot of internal things. We do a lot of article basing and then uh, we use it as well. So we use a lot of the same tools you're using. So that's good to hear. You know, we just we're not using ClickUp. We use a different software for that. But it's good to hear that. So, well, Josh, I, as we wind down here for the last final moments, man, I am so grateful for your time. Just a wealth of knowledge and information. And thank you so much for being the church media expert that I, we can turn to for some of these things. Now, I, I, I want you to tell our friends out here in the podcast sphere, the universe of all audio things, where they can find you. But also, before you do that, give me like the 10 second elevator pitch as to why we need to use you for all of our production. Because you have enough on your plate. <laughs> church pastors, creative arts people, don't waste your time doing production. Tell the story of Jesus, tell it well, and then entrust that to another another organization like his productions to do the work of production and distribution. Definitely. Fantastic. Tell everybody where you're at, how we can get a hold of you and where they yep. can find you. Hisproductions.com, his productions. I think it's HP Radio Media on some of those platforms. We're on Twitter, we're on TikTok, uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. Um, yeah, you can email me directly. It comes right to this phone in my hand, info at hisproductions.com. Um, I would be glad to schedule a time to talk with you about your podcast, your TV ministry, or your radio ministry. Um, I could say we're called to do this. Like we, when we say deacons of media, the, the folks here at his productions, I can't believe I could pay to do this. It's such a joy <laughs> to do it. It's I haven't clocked in in over 20 years. And so we have fun at this. It's not just a job. I work at a church. Like I'm a worship arts pastor. I get uh, what it means to have a church budget. You got to stay in. I get what it means to work with the equipment that you have. You can't always buy the latest and greatest. So I kind of see both worlds as a church staff member and then as a professional in the media world. I know I can help you, um, viewer, get your content out. Absolutely. Well, we'll get all of that stuff. We'll cumulate it down. We'll put it in the description below. So if you're interested in looking at his productions and talking with Josh and his crew about what they can do to help your church, please don't hesitate to click that link. Dan, Josh, thank you again, buddy. I really appreciate your time and of course, all of your information. I'm sure we'll have you back on. I'm, I'm assuming you'd be willing to jump back in with us on this. 
Gary, I, I, I don't get on very many podcasts. Sometimes I tell my faith story, but, uh, so it's always a joy. I, I like to say the same thing. The little I know I'm happy to share. Uh, you use the word expert. I don't know that I'm an expert, but the little I know I'm happy to share. I'd be glad to come back anytime. Absolutely, man. Well, we appreciate that. So listen, if you are not familiar with BoxCast, we are a live streaming platform for churches that want to help you use our platform to get your video and content out to all of those who need to hear your message for your community. So if you haven't already, please click the link below to chat with one of our experts here at BoxCast who can get you started today and get you moving with a video platform service that will help you expand your outreach and engagement. All right, for BoxCast Podcast, this is me, Gary. It's been a pleasure. And to all of you out there, thanks again and happy streaming.